Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining. My name is Eric and this is a processing Python tutorial. So it's a little bit different than a lot of the other tutorials I've done. It's kind of a new technology, at least for this channel. I haven't talked about it before. I think I've made two videos in the past on generative art. So I'd encourage you to check those out if you're curious about what generative art is. But it's essentially creating art through code, creative coding. Processing is just another method or another tool that we can use to do that. So I'll put a link in the description maybe to those videos and definitely to the place that you can download processing. I am using the Python version. I know it's a little hard to see up here in the top right corner. I think it starts off with Java. So if you if you click on the Java that will probably be there and then go to add mode, drag this over, there's a couple different versions that uh, it'll allow you to use. I'm actually, I'm mostly familiar with Python and p5.js. I've got this file, I'm gonna go through a, a real simple tutorial today on, uh, basically we're just gonna make a circle and we're gonna add a shadow under the circle. So it's nothing, nothing very exciting at all, but it's enough, I think, that people could, honestly, if you wanted to, you could start doing some pretty cool stuff on your own in Python. I've got this setup function. Pretty much all processing sketches are gonna start with setup. And then if you're making kind of an animation or a GIF, you would also have a draw function. And this function is called every frame, but we're only gonna call the setup function because we're doing something at the very beginning. So just to get going quickly, if I say size 400, 400, and I just hit this little run button right here, It'll open up the canvas and I'll pull it over and we've got a 400 by 400 sketch. Generally, I would set the width and height before the setup function in kind of a global variable situation. Uh, but with this example, I think it's okay if we just kind of define them manually. Let's bump it up to a thousand. And then kind of what I was talking about with the draw shadow. I'm sorry, I, I keep talking and then I get a little distracted. So draw shadow, draw circle. And that's really all we're gonna be doing. But what I, what I was mentioning about processing, making it a lot easier to do simple things, one of those simple things is drawing a circle. And, and that applies to a lot of basic shapes. And that seems like not really that big of a deal, but it is pretty powerful just to have that natively. So when we're drawing, I guess we'll start off with drawing the circle first circle let's say we'll start it at the middle so 500 500 and we'll give it a size of 300 it's just white with a, a straight black border there are a lot of things in processing you can do to kind of play around with those different things so no stroke refers to the or stroke in general all the stroke commands refer to the outline so if I say no stroke we get rid of the stroke or we could have colored the stroke by saying stroke and then give it a color 255, 0, 255. Let's just try that just to see what it looks like. So you can color the stroke. You can also make the stroke larger with stroke weight. So if we do stroke weight 12, that should be much bigger. Yeah. So just a few things to play with the stroke. And they have really good documentation on the different functions that you can call. Uh, to play around with your shapes. So we're going to stick with no stroke and we are going to edit the color of the circle. So I just showed you how to work with stroke. Now if if that's the outline of the circle then we want to edit the filling of the circle or literally feel. So I have a color here that I want to use for this which is 176, 224, 230. And it's just this nice looking blue color. So at the very beginning, we can call background and just set a color that way. And we're going to set it just a straight white. So 255, 255, 255. We're going to draw a shadow underneath the circle. And that seems simple. At least it, it seemed very simple to me. But if you do what kind of comes naturally, it just doesn't look very good in my opinion. So my first thought was, oh, if I want to draw a shadow, I'm just going to draw a dark shape underneath the circle. So if we fill it, let's say 30, 30, 30. Um, so it's dark. And then we're going to draw a circle of the same size. 
we're going to offset it a little bit. So let's say 550, 550, 300. So we've got this dark shape circle and that, I mean, it works. It looks like a shadow. We could even make it lighter, more of a gray color and that'll probably actually look a lot better. Yeah, honestly, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. But my opinion is that it looks a little bit better if we soften the edges a little bit. And there's a few different ways we can do that. And you'll see what it looks like pretty quickly. But the method that I kind of arrived on may not be the best way, but it I guess it makes sense to me. So what I did is I defined a color that's pretty dark. So 15, 15, 15, it's not quite black, but it is very dark. But with this fill command, we have an optional fourth parameter. And that parameter is the opacity. So I set the opacity to five, and this value is out of 255. So we could, 255 means it's not transparent at all. Zero means we don't see it. So five is a very low value because we're gonna be drawing a lot of circles on top of each other to form that shadow. And it's going to create this kind of soft edge, and it's going to be darker in the center. And I, I just think it looks pretty good. So we have access to all the Python logic. So 4i in range 30. So we're going to loop 30 times or enumerate. And then we're going to draw a circle in the same spot. Let's actually draw the shadow in the center of the image. 500, 500. And so the size will start off at 300, but we want that to decrease every time. So what I did is I times five. So every time it gets five smaller. And let's just see what that looks like to begin with. And then after we do that, actually we don't need to call no stroke again because we call it at the beginning. After we do that, I wanna make sure I got everything right. So, okay, so we need to move this circle. And for now, let's just do we'll do basically what we did before we'll just move it back 450 and we don't have to edit this size because the circle doesn't need to change so let's just run it and I think I think this is pretty good yeah so I wish I had saved the image for the other way but in my opinion this just looks a lot better so we can take that one step further just to see it just to kind of play with around with what it looks like so I'm going to do exactly what I just did with one circle I think I'm gonna make the circle a little bit smaller and then we're gonna start doing this all over the image uh, with a bunch of circles, a bunch of different shadows. We're gonna see how that looks. I, I may change the color of the circle, but, and I'm kinda of going off script here, so we'll just see what happens. So we're gonna say four, let's say four C. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We decide how many circles we wanna do. Let's do 50 to begin with. So we're gonna loop through all of this, right? We've already set this feel. I guess we need to put that inside the loop. The no stroke doesn't really matter for right now. Uh, we're going to move our comment, draw a shadow. So for C in range 50, so right now we're saying let's draw 50 circles uh, with 50 accompanying shadows. And the cool effect that's going to happen is that the shadows, as long as their opacity is low enough, are going to start to reveal kind of what's underneath them. So we'll get this, you know, hopefully cascading effect from the circles. So let me think about how I want to do this. I think we just need to pick random values. So we know that the size of the image is 1000 by 1000. So inside of the circle or inside of the loop, we have to determine what the center of the shadow is. I'm wondering if we should set the, I guess it doesn't really matter. So let's just say center x equals random. And we're gonna do it from a range of 200 to 800. So we're gonna make sure that we're not kind of on the edges. And then center y will be the same thing. 200, 800. And then we can just base everything we do off of this. So we'll draw the shadow. Let's say we draw the shadow at the center. And then the size, is, let's actually bring the size down to 150. And then we're gonna do the same thing here for the actual circle itself. We're gonna remove that decreasing value. And then we're gonna take it back 
since we're drawing a smaller circle, I guess we should, I guess it makes sense to do half of the value that we did before. Well, that's the thing too. I don't know if this will, okay, so we'll play with this in a second too. I want to, I want to play with those values and I think that'll look pretty cool, but I think this should work. We're drawing in a range. We're setting a, a center. Let's just do it. Let's just see what happens. Okay. It doesn't look great. I mean, it's it's not mind blowing or anything. Let's actually add some stroke to it for an outline. But we don't want the stroke for the shadows. So this is a cool example of you just kind of have to play around with it. I mean, we're not doing anything super exciting, but it's fun to just start adding things. You know, you think of things like, oh, what would this look like? And then you just add it. If it doesn't look good, get rid of it. If it does, keep it. And then you never know. I mean, some of my projects that I've worked on, they've ended up looking much better because of, honestly, mistakes that I made almost more than they have choices. I kind of like it with the outlines a little bit more, but I think if this is going to look really cool, we're going to need to, we're probably going to need to increase the shadow. We still got like a nice little effect here where you can see the shadows. There's depth, but I think the circles are too big. There probably needs to be some color variation. And the shadows probably need to be a little darker. So, and I think the other thing, well, the other thing I was thinking about doing is maybe randomizing the, this value, the offset so that there would be different shadows for each circle, but I, I don't know if visually that would make sense. Uh, but we can try it, I guess. Let's let's just do it, just to do it. Random, we're gonna pick between random, or between negative 25 and 25. I think that will work. Well, it's hard to really tell. And I guess, Physically, it doesn't really make sense that they would be able to do that. They should be all under the same lighting source. Let's take let's take it back to the way it was. We're also going to pull this size value out. I'm going to say let's just call it CS because I'm going to be editing that, and I don't want. We'll say 150 for now. I do want to see what happens if I make the shadow just a little bit darker. So we're going to double the opacity value. So it's it's gonna make a big difference. Uh, so yeah, you can already see that the circle is a lot more well-defined. The only issue is that if you look closely, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it at this resolution, but you can actually start to see kind of the shadow bands, you know, because we are incrementing by basically five every time, five pixels, and you can kind of see that almost, and I think it'll become even more well-defined the more I increase the opacity. Because the opacity is basically compounding on itself. So the higher it is, the easier it's gonna be a, be to see those bands. But I, I think that looks I think that looks pretty good. The last thing that I think we could do that would make a big difference is let's randomize the color value. Just again, just to see what it looks like. So we're gonna say random two fifty five random 255 and random 255 I don't think this is gonna look great but we'll see yeah the problem with always randomizing the colors just outright is there's just no trend with the colors you know you have these real dark heavy colors mixing with these brighter happier colors and it just doesn't every now and then you'll get a good result and it looks amazing but for the most part, and you can kind of limit it. So let's let's try to put some limits on it. So we don't want anything to be too dark. So we need to we need to randomize in the upper range. So let's say 50 to 55. I do think that looks better than when we had it. Let's just see what happens if we bump one of them up like pretty high. So we're going to bump the green value. Theoretically, this is going to be mostly green, which honestly might look better. I mean, if we start putting these kind of restrictions and kind of controlling the, the I guess, the primary color of the generation. Let's, let's try it with blue. I like blue a little bit better. That's interesting. 
So you can you can see how things are changing a little bit. And this isn't the worst looking thing. I mean, it, it really it doesn't look that bad. The shadows are adding almost an unnoticed depth because I think if we take the shadows out, you'll see how much of a difference they make. So sorry about that cut there. Actually, I had to save the sketch as circle tutorial so that I'd be able to actually save within a folder. So save lowercase because I was making that mistake. And then I usually just throw it in an examples folder and I'm calling it shadow because we're going to do it again with no shadow just so you can kind of see the difference. So here's the image that I've saved. And then let's get rid of, or actually let's name it no shadow now. And let's just comment out the shadow portion of the code. So it should still work. Yeah. And hopefully you can already kind of visualize the difference. I'll leave that up and I'll pull back up the shadow. I don't know how many times I'm going to say it, but you know, we're not doing anything crazy. This isn't, I, I, this wouldn't make, honestly, it wouldn't make a terrible poster, but you know, it's not a groundbreaking piece of art, but you can already see how the shadow makes such a big difference between the image on the left. But honestly, I kind of like the appeal of that too. Different strokes, right? I mean, this, I, I kind of dig that. I don't think that looks bad at all. It's very flat, very minimalist. This just has a little bit more depth, a little more realism. So whichever kind you like, at, hopefully this tutorial gives you some of the tools that you need to pull off either one. This wasn't a super in-depth tutorial, but we touched on a lot of concepts that you need, honestly, to start thinking about generative art. And really, those concepts just involve throwing in random values wherever you can. The more that you can do that, I think the more fun you'll have because you're you'll always be surprised by the result so uh, in this one we know what to expect I mean no matter what we change we still know that we're getting circles but it's still cool it's still cool to play around and see what you're gonna get so let's just go crazy for this last little example I'm gonna do 500 circles with a size of 50 we'll change what else do we need to change I don't think we need to change anything we're doing 500 circles size of 50 that should be fine yeah so a pretty distinct difference and that's just because of how dark our shadow is let's bump that back down let's actually bring it down to two you can see a little bit more there and and again this margin here is just because of the the way that we've kind of placed that you know we could change the margin to 100 I kind of like it when it was all bunched up in the middle there. That, that's kind of cool. So now it gets a little more spread out. So let's just bump up the, let's just go big with a thousand circles. Yeah. So I think I'll leave it there. I think that's a good place to stop. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. I know that processing isn't something that I've talked about in the past, but I really enjoy using it. And I think there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. So if you learned something from this video, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you want to see in the future. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos, and I look forward to making more in the future. Remember to hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.